Hello everyone, I'm Christina and I wanted to take you through a few cloning and picture cleanup techniques that I use from time to time in Photoshop. Um, you, if you watch the latest Raw Doctor, I kind of give you guys a very quick and sort of sloppy uh, look at how to clone things out of images, but there are often times certain things that you might want to take into consideration like the edges of something. Sometimes you're trying to clone something out that's really close to an edge that's really important and you don't want to clone that edge out. You want to keep the edges clean. Um, there are also in some pictures sometimes then all the different ways that you can clone things. Uh, some of them will work better than others so I just kind of wanted to do a uh, an overview of some of the things that I've learned over time and uh, to sort of help guide you through a few of the different cloning options uh, that you have in Photoshop. So we have this picture here that I took at an engagement session of this couple and they brought their dog along which uh, their dog did make it into some pictures and made it into this one but it wasn't exactly the way that we wanted her to be in the pictures so she ended up being in the picture but it's actually kind of distracting there are a few other things that I see in this image that are pretty distracting like these sticks right here and there are some down here too but I don't mind those as much as these these are very big they're very white they're very prominent in the picture and I don't want them to be a distraction so we're going to go from this picture right here to this right here. We're going to clone all of those distracting things out, make a cleaner image that is a lot simpler and uh, more pleasing to the eye. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to try to tackle on this image is to get rid of these white sticks right here. As I mentioned, there are a few different ways that you can get rid of distracting elements in Photoshop. Photoshop has a tool called the Spot Healing Brush Tool, which is a smart tool, which means that you pretty much just click in an area and it's going to do the work for you. Um, so one of the things that I like to do as I'm cloning and sort of making changes to the image is I like to create a new layer so that I make non-destructive changes. This way I can turn on turn off the layer and sort of see my progress along. And if I change my mind later, I don't have to go back in the history and do a lot of the changes that I made. I can just basically turn on and turn off this layer. So I'm going to use the uh, content aware, the spot healing brush tool. And I'm just going to paint over this, over these things right here. And then see what happens. I should also note, so I have a new layer and I am sampling all layers. So when you check this sample all layers box, what this means is that it's going to take all the layers, including the one that you're working on and all the ones below. So if this was unchecked and I dragged in here or dragged over here, painted over there, nothing happens. So you have to make sure this is checked if you're painting on a new layer. If you're just gonna do the changes in the original layer, that's fine. So. I painted over and it did remove the stick, but I am seeing a lot of textures where the stick used to be that don't really match the surrounding area. So, you know, if I just kept it like this and posted the picture as is and then maybe fix this one, most people probably couldn't tell, but to me, this is kind of sloppy Photoshop work. I wouldn't deliver an image like that. I wouldn't post an image like that. I want to do it right. So since this didn't work, I am going to try the next easiest tool that Adobe uh, Photoshop has available. And that is the content aware fill tool. So I'm going to duplicate this layer again in the name of making non-destructive changes. And I'm going to select my lasso tool. And I'm going to select the area around this white stick. And now I'm going to right click and click fill. Just leave everything as is and click OK. And then sometimes this does a really good job and sometimes it does a really crappy job. 
in this case it didn't do the job that I was hoping it would so I'm just gonna undo that and try a different way so I don't need this layer now I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to select the healing brush tool the healing brush tool is different than the spot healing brush tool because you can select the area that you want to clone so in this case I want to sample an area from right next to the stick to get the closest possible match so I sample the area and I'm just going to paint as I go and I might just want to resample as I go along just so that there aren't too many obvious repeating patterns that might give away the fact that this area was cloned out. So the idea is just to make everything look as natural and seamless as possible and to not draw attention to it. And this way, uh, you'll have a stronger image. And it doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's not super obvious to the untra untrained eye. I feel like there are many times when I clone something and I feel like I can really see it, something that I can't really unsee because I know where I made the change, but most people won't be able to see. So there it is. You can kind of see an outline, but I think that if somebody were to look uh, in this area, they probably wouldn't be able to tell that it's cloned out. And you can continue to sample from different areas that have the same hues and tones and try to create a more random uh, sort of pattern in the area that you cloned out and then that will help it uh, look even less obvious. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with this one right here. So just sampling from different parts to make it look as random as possible. And I'm currently using a small Wacom tablet to fix this, but you can use your mouse or any other tool that you have. I've just found that it can be a little bit more precise. And if you want a link to the Wacom tablet, you can find it in the comments down below. Great. So the only thing I'm noticing and I'm being super nitpicky is this little spot right here looks very close to this spot. So I'm just going to sample from right here and then like try to patch it up so that it doesn't look the same. Great. And now I can turn off and turn on my layer to see my changes. And it's as though there were no sticks there in the first place. Great, the next thing that I'm going to clone out is the dog right here. So as I mentioned before, we wanted her in the picture. She wasn't exactly where we wanted her in the picture. So it's too distracting. I'm just going to take her out. So again, I'm going to make a new layer. And you can name your layers. I don't ever name my layers, but you can if you like to be organized. Uh, and now I am going to create a selection. So let me explain the problem that you might run into in this situation. So I'm going to zoom in. Um, and I'm going to sample from the edge of the dress and try to patch this area up. Um, so it's doing a pretty good job. But I'm going to run into an issue when I get to the higher parts of the dress and I can't match the angle that the dress is falling at. So if I try to clone this area right here, the dress is just going to end up looking straight. And there are some times when there's super high contrast between the edge of something, between an edge. Um, Photoshop doesn't really do the best job at cloning. So I'm going to take a different approach to cloning this out. I am going to delete this layer and create a new one. And now I'm going to take my pen tool and I'm going to zoom way in. That might have been a little too far. And I'm going to trace the outline of this dress right here. So I clicked and I dragged and I want to uh, 
continue to do that. I'm holding down the command key to really fine tune this point right here and make sure that it lines up with the edge of the dress. I'm going to zoom in just to make sure that I'm being as precise as I can. And then one more point right there. And now I'm just going to select the area around. doesn't really matter how big. doesn't have to be perfect. It can be pretty sloppy. I just wanted to get the edge of the dress right. Great. And now that I've created my new layer, I'm going to go to Paths. And I'm going to click on this circle right here in the bottom right hand corner, which is going to make this outline a selection. I'm going to go back to my layers. And now I'm going to use a different tool than we've been using. I'm going to use the clone stamp tool. And the clone stamp tool samples from an area and pastes an exact copy an exact replica of the area that you're sampling. So the healing brush tool sort of samples and tries to fix it. The clone stamp is just going to look exactly the same. So this is a situation when I want to use the clone stamp tool. I'm going to make my brush just a little bit smaller and I'm going to hold down the option key and sample from this area right here and just paint. And I think I might turn my opacity up to 100. And I'm just going to continue to paint around here. And because this, I've created this selection, I'm only going to be making this change and cloning the area that's selected. So I could clone right here and nothing outside of the, the selected area will change. One tip that I have found when I clone things is that if you sample from the same sort of uh, distance, so I'm right next to the area as opposed to like right above or right below, you can get a little bit more of a seamless look um, because usually that area will look like it's in the correct focus if I'm making sense. So if I were to sample from up here, it would look a little just too fuzzy because this area is further away. And I have to be careful not to sample the pants. Great. And now I'm going to hit Command D or go to Select and Deselect Layers. Nope. Deselect. And that's it. And now I can turn this on and off and it's as though there was no dog there in the first place. So I'm pretty happy with the way this image looks. I wouldn't do anything else to it, maybe just crop in a little bit on the left for a more balanced composition, but I just wanted to take some time and show you guys how you can quickly and easily use different ways to clone things, at, distracting elements out of your images based on your needs and the elements in, that are present in your image. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, leave a comment down below telling us what your favorite way to clone things out of your pictures is. Um, if you use Adobe Photoshop, that's great. If you use Lightroom, that's great. So just tell us which one is your favorite way to clone things out. Thanks very much. Goodbye.